Do you feel like an imposter? No, generally I don't suffer from any imposter syndrome. Uh, I suffer from the opposite problem. <laughs> um, do you feel like an imposter? Um, I haven't had too much problem with imposter syndrome. Um, I'm trying to think like if there's anything. I definitely feel stupid a lot of the time. I mean, you know, I, I, I work with so many brilliant people who have expertise in so many different areas um, that I don't have expertise in. So it's, I, I quite commonly feel like I don't know much of anything. Um, but I don't think I really have imposter syndrome at this point. I don't, I don't really feel like somehow I got here via luck. I feel like I got here via like harsh fighting and something else or like persevering or something. Hmm. So I, yeah, I, I think I, I had more imposter syndrome when I was a postdoc at Johns Hopkins. Hmm. I was, I was like, I shouldn't belong here. I'm just here because they wanted a diversity candidate or something. Um, and a lot of the stuff they were talking about, I was like, I don't know what we're talking about. Uh, okay. But now in my career, I, I don't think I feel like an imposter anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you feel like an imposter? No. Uh, so the most important thing to me is, uh, is my work. Uh, and with my work, I've been, I've been very fortunate to uh, get some results during my PhD um, that, that somehow due to the circumstances communicated to me that uh, I'm, I'm probably in the line, right line of work. I'm probably in the right business and, uh, and, I, and I seem to be reasonably good at this. Hmm. Um, do you feel like an imposter? Uh, no. No, I don't feel like an imposter. I don't have the imposter syndrome. However, I feel surprised very often. So, you know, I'm surprised whenever I get a promotion or when I got hired. You know, oh, you really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but then I don't feel like I'm a, an imposter at that job. But I feel surprised every day I go to my office and they haven't changed the log yet. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. um, do you feel like an imposter? No, no. I used to a lot, but then I read so much about imposter syndrome that I don't anymore. Mm. Because, you know, now I, I know it's kind of super normal, so I don't anymore. Yeah. Um, we decide what the norm is. If everybody feels the same way, then that's the norm. And so that's okay. Yeah. Plus, I know I'm good at, at lots of things I do. And I think I have a good sense of what I'm good at, what I'm bad at. Mm. And so now um, I felt a lot more like an imposter a lot earlier, like when I was 15, 16, something like this, because, um, and also I was just not well calibrated. Like sometimes I would think I had done awesome and it would be terrible. And sometimes I would think I had done terrible and people thought it was genius. So there was just like this mismatch a bit. Hmm. Uh, but, but then, you know, at, at some point people really thought I was a genius and I was thinking, no, I'm not. I'm not. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> And, and then things just, you know, I think now things are in a much more balanced place. So yeah. I, I don't really feel that yeah. anymore. Yeah. Do you, do you, or have you felt like an imposter? Oh yeah, everybody does. I do. Of course mm. I have. Yeah. Mm. That's, uh, this is, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I still feel it. So I feel like, you know, I've, I've been lucky enough to get various awards and get selected to this or that or the other and i uh, seriously wonder okay is this was the committee just drunk that day <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so uh and and then yeah maybe i mean it's fine i think uh i think uh i i i, I mean i don't uh I, I don't think that it's ever been debilitating, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that's that's the important thing. It's okay to have self doubt. I think self doubt is important for uh, for being self aware. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and if somebody never had the imposter syndrome, I would really worry about that person. <laughs> but that means that they have no self doubt, mm -hmm. which means that they will not realize when they are wrong mm -hmm. and when they have to change. Mm -hmm. 
Do you feel like an imposter? Uh, so for certain things, for sure. Uh, I, well, there's this thing about being worried that I, I, I'm not as creative necessarily because it's been a while. I've had an idea I've been excited about or something like that. Whenever that happens, I guess I get, I kind of get that feeling. Um, also as a, so at Google, I'm a manager. I kind of feel like an imposter there. Like I'm doing my best. I'm trying to just put myself in my report shoes when it comes to talking about whatever challenges they're going through and trying to be helpful. I just try to be a good person. That's largely my approach to being a manager. But, and you know, I've taken some training and whatnot, but I still feel like I'm always learning about it. Um, that is probably the thing that I feel most an imposter about, uh, which, which, you know, I, I think is a natural thing, but that's, that is one feeling I'm still struggling with and trying to sort of feel okay with. At least it, it's good because it means I'm always looking for trying to be better. Uh, but, but it's not, it's not a good feeling to live with. So it would be <laughs> nice if it just got away and I would, you know, do my job fine. Do you feel like an imposter? Um, I, I don't know if I feel it that way. I, I, I think for me, I, I would articulate it differently. I often feel different in the room. I, I don't necessarily feel like an imposter, probably because I've been so privileged and sort of been, you know, told many times that like, I have my, you know, place around the table and I have my voice in the room is, and so on. But, but I do sometimes feel like a little bit the alien in the room, hmm. just in terms of, of thinking differently, seeing things differently and so on. And, and really just always questioning like, is this just me or is this a valid point of view? that feeling is a very familiar one. Um, but I think I don't necessarily, I, I guess I, I've, I've been very, very lucky to have many people to, you know, support my point of view that I don't, I don't feel it as much as if I'm able to just say like, I'm thinking of this really differently than other people. And, and because I can sort of also sit in the uncertainty that Maybe they're right. Maybe I'm right. Sometimes they must be right. Sometimes I must be right. Um, and that's okay. Yeah. But the feeling might be similar. Yeah. The, that of an imposter. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Um, do you feel like an imposter? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, I think um, it, it, this is something that, uh, I mean, I, I've told a lot of people um, that I, I almost quit grad school after the first year um, because I didn't, I did not think I was going to be able to finish it. Um, I didn't feel like I was figuring things out fast enough. Of course, you know, I, I know now that it takes at least a year for a grad student to figure out, you know, what they're doing, often much more. Mm -hmm. um, and that's very normal, but I didn't know that then. Um, when I started my, my faculty position at CMU, which, which felt uh, like a complete random act of the universe. And, you know, I was, I was shocked to get that interview, let alone get the job. Um, I, uh, I remember one of my colleagues, someone I, I really, really uh, like a lot and, and still consider a friend um, and, you know, harbor absolutely no ill will, but uh, the guy went and got a MacArthur Genius Award in our first month as faculty. <laughs> And, uh, you know, that, 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 uh, I was happy for him, right? He's, he's my friend, but on the other hand, it's sort of like, do I really, is this really the world I belong in? Is this, is this where I should be? Um, and, you know, a whole, whole, like I said earlier, a whole series of accidents since then. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know how I got here. And, uh, I don't know how many how many ways I can say until I'm blue in the face that I, I don't think anybody really knows how they got where they are uh, or feels prepared to do the job that they're doing. Um, and uh, yeah, it's that's that's part of the job. <laughs> um, do you feel like an imposter? Hmm. Sure. I mean, I don't know what to say about that. I certainly did when I arrived at MIT. I felt like. Um, when I, here's how I survived it too. I felt like, kind of looked at my publications. And I thought, yeah, it's a good set, but you know, they're really good because I just collaborated with a lot of really smart people. 
And I felt like, well, what do I have to offer? I don't know. But then I thought about it. And okay, so if, if, if I'm someone who can only do really good work collaborating with really smart people, but I, but I do do good work under those conditions, well, then maybe MIT is just the right place for me. You know, then that's fine, you know, be there. Yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah. And, and I guess, you know, it's, I guess it's something I've been living with for, you know, 20 years now or 19 years um, that I've come up with strategies to ignore it, I guess. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you feel like an imposter? I think, yeah, sometimes. And this is related to, like, the response to the previous two questions. Um, um, because I think my um, sort of the achievements, uh, I feel like they are, <laughs> I'm not sure if I uh, deserve in, in terms of like, um, I don't know, um, I hadn't, uh, this project that I was describing, I was a junior student at that time. And uh, yeah, I feel like, sometimes I feel like maybe I don't deserve the achievements. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to go off uh, the script too much here, but uh, it's not like fact, like you were interviewed, right? It's not like they looked at your CV and from one paper uh, seven yeah. years ago, whatever, uh, they made a decision, right? You've done other pieces of work since then. They've all spoken to you for multiple days and, um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, have you, or do you feel like an imposter? Um only in certain situations in certain scenarios um when i was younger i felt the whole imposter syndrome um a lot more huh. um now i'm kind of used to being the only black female in the room and so it's it's part of my dna but growing up that was a little bit harder to deal with um and so now it really only happens fleetingly it's like when I'm meeting, you know, a certain uh, billionaires in a room, you know, around dinner, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like sitting next to someone who could probably buy my entire city if they wanted to, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. So that that sometimes happens, but it's fleeting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you or have you felt like an imposter? You know, I have always felt like that, except for right now, which is very interesting. I always, I'm always wondering, like, why is that the case? Hmm. Um, I think the first time ever that I didn't feel like that was when I joined um, Microsoft Research as a postdoc. Hmm. And I was trying to figure out why that's the case. And I, I really think it's because the people around me valued everything I bring to the table. Hmm. As in, like, it wasn't like, oh, the, you know, it wasn't like if I don't know this one thing that it's a problem or if I don't know these two things, like it just, there were things about me that I felt that they valued. So I think that helped because it's weird. Like I haven't felt like an imposter in the last two years. And I think this is like literally the first time ever because <laughs> like every single new job, every single new endeavor, 100% and to the point where I am like I remember when I first got my internship at Apple as an undergrad I was so um I didn't eat like a lot of food for like a week or two just just because I was just so nervous about the whole thing and um like <laughs> you know um like for example um it wasn't you know soldering things simple things like soldering little components would just make uh, make it impossible for me to do anything because I never learned how to do that in school in classes but then if you're trying to debug something or if you're trying to like look at something you have to do it and so I would like burn these components that were given as you know samples trying to like do it and then I don't know how to ask people and then somebody, somebody, one person actually complained that I was asking too many questions. Um, and so then that didn't make things better at all. Like, I don't want to ask more questions. So I was like trying to like figure out, okay, like, how can I route questions so that each person doesn't think I'm asking them too much? But like, it's okay, you know, it was just, yeah. And so, or, you know, I would just always feel like 
no matter how much I read about something, there's this other thing I just won't feel like I know. Um, like, honestly, right now, I feel like I've forgotten all of them. I'm like, do I remember math? Do I remember stats? Like, I haven't. Yeah, I've just, I've been kind of reading up on, like, other aspects of, like, my work that I think are important. So I'm like, oh, my God, do I remember any of this other stuff? Like, um, so there's always something like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, um, and definitely, I used to have this imposter syndrome, like, very, very, very uh, severely, I would say. But I think it also played with my environment and how people in my environment treated me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you or do you feel like an imposter? No, not really. Um, I know that's a common feeling that people have. I, I don't feel that way. I guess I don't really think that anybody is an imposter. <laughs> so I also don't think I'm an imposter. Um, I think that everybody has like, I think I think in a in a way I think most people are, are tend to be like, you know, well above the qualification bar for the job that they're doing. Hmm. Um, at least, at least it's certainly the case in academia, probably. Uh, so I don't think um, I think many people who are deserving are not able to get the kind of job that they want, and I feel lucky that I have. Um, but I. But I think that all the people that get the kind of job that they want, like that are researchers, are are like, you know, have worked hard and are qualified to do it. Yeah. 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 Um, have you felt or do you feel like an imposter? So I think growing up, um, so I was, I think this goes back to the what I was saying earlier in terms of, right, like, focusing more on math, focusing on doing well, right? Because of that hyper focus, I also didn't have much of a social awareness of what people are thinking and doing around me. Mm -hmm. So in a way that <laughs> probably worked in my favor <laughs> because right, I really didn't give a damn what people thought. <laughs> yeah. So, sure, sometimes it hurt me, but most of the time, right? Like, uh, in a way, I didn't face that. But that doesn't mean other women don't, right? Like, I talk to so many other women. And uh, when they tell me how they feel that they don't belong, I connect to that. And I felt that more recently, and especially, right, like these corporate conferences or events that so not just right in numbers being all male, but just the culture of Silicon Valley of move fast, break things, kind of like there's not even civility <laughs> and just this arrogance and like ex almost very explicit misogyny and sexism. I think that's like in a way, right, try to break that the confidence I had. And that's when I realized, oh, this is really happening. This is, mm -hmm. and it's not me. It's the <laughs> environment around that is so broken. And, and maybe until now I could kind of make it because I was so blind to it. Yeah. Right? Now, once I'm opening up my eyes and looking at how others are behaving, <laughs> looking at how they're reacting. I mean, not all of that is good. Of course, there is a good fraction of people who are amazing. But this, maybe the minority who are toxic are really ruining it for everyone, both women and men. Uh, so we need to, so I would say the imposter syndrome is more a function of the toxicity in these environments that needs mm -hmm. to be fixed rather than something that women need to work on. Of course, women need to be aware of it and they need to fight it because the system, if it's not going to change, they are the ones who are going to suffer, right? But we focus too much on telling women and minorities how to lean in. And I'm like, you know, like, we should just smash this whole wall <laughs> of patriarchy, like not just lean in, right? Because that's where I, I feel the imposter syndrome is coming because the system is not enabling women and minorities to be who they are and to be their confident selves. And... Um, you know, that's, I think, part of the growth has to come from changing those cultures. Um, so I hope that's happening now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, have you felt or do you feel like an imposter? 
Hi, Buford. Like, I think anytime when you're doing something where people have expectations and your own internal um, sense on your readiness for that role is, uh, you know, is match match. I mean, you could call that an imposter. I think that um, I don't think for me it's a long standing thing. It's a transient sense. And I try to be open to people about it. Hopefully, I'm in an environment where the people I'm working with, I can trust to say that this is, you know, my current level of readiness. Um, but I feel like I have that luxury and not all people have that luxury and it can be an extremely tough thing. So I happen to be in an environment where the people with whom I work or, um, you know, have uh, that I can be open with people when there are situations where I might not be as prepared as I may need to be. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. You know, I, I think that that's something I don't take for granted. Have you or do you feel like an imposter? Yeah, I mean, in certain areas, of course, I think everyone does. Like, as I was saying, when you work with someone who knows way more about a topic than you know, or about a particular area, um, you, you have an inclination to be like, wow, I can't believe they know so much about this thing and I don't know anything. Yeah. Um, do you feel like an imposter? Oh, what's that? Do you feel like an imposter? Like you don't uh, belong in the position that you have or, or anything um, like that? Originally, a, a little bit. When I was a, a graduate student, uh, I, I kind of, in the first few years, I was a bit struggling. So, um, um, so things get slightly, slightly better later on. So I was never imagined that I would end up in the academia, academia, even though I like really like this flexibility um, and the freedom. Um, so, but I think more and more when I start to do uh, something that I'm really passionate about and I want to show people, I start to feel um, um, more and more like less and less uh, like uh, think that, okay, I'm, maybe I belong here. Yeah. 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 